G'day and welcome to Stream Day 2022. This is a uh, follow on from Petra. Thank you, Petra, for your um, talking about switches. And this is a natural follow on here as we're talking about how to control those switches. So whether you are using the ATEM Mini Pro, which is very popular with many people, or whether you're using something like OBS, I'm gonna go through um, a way in which you can um, essentially for free control your switches today. Um, so if you're familiar with my channel, you would know that I've done a lot of work on a program called Companion. And that's a Companion, Companion is a program that enables you to speak to a whole bunch of different devices so that on a uh, Stream Deck, which is what I have here, uh, which is a 32 button or a 15 button um, deck, you can have that sitting on your desk and control a whole lot of things. You can um, switch your um, input and output, or you could even like stack actions so that you can do a whole lot of things at once. When I went with this show, I have uh, like a pre-show button to set up what I'm doing with this show. And then when I went live here, I had just one button, which was executing a whole lot of actions. So it makes it very easy to, um, as, a, as a one man band or as a one woman band, to uh, take control of your show so that you can present and you can execute things and that your desk is is not a mess. You know, I've been able to um, keep my desk fairly clean here. So um, if you are joining, um, uh, well, you are here, obviously. Um, I was going to say is like put put something in the chat. Um, I am list watching that, and um, if you have any questions as we go along, if anything else needs explaining, um, do ask a question, and we can get to those. Um, and the other thing is that in the description here, I've put um, a link to a free profile that you can go and grab if you want to um, download that and get started. Um, it's going to give you a bit of an insight into VLC. Um, uh, Vicrio to control like Google and Chrome and um, what was the one? H2R, which John is coming up after me. He's going to go more in depth on that. Um, and I'm using his uh, program today to control that through Companion. Um, and um, not in that, but you can also just through OBS, you can control Companion as well. Um, so for, for starters, let's go to um, this website, bitfocus.io, um, if, you, if you go to this website here and go download, there's John's face there again. Um, it's got Windows, Mac, Intel, and Linux. Um, you can download your version of that. I've got an Intel, I've got a Mac 16-inch uh, computer that I'm running here, so that's the version that I've got. So download that, install it, and then what you'll have is up here, which I think you can just see. Yeah, you can just see here in this taskbar, it will pop up. Um, uh, to show or hide the window, which is this one, and you can set your uh, network setting. So you can either do a wired connection to it or a um, local connection. I'm just running locally because I'm running this companion server on my Mac, um, but you can run it on a Raspberry Pi if you have a Raspberry Pi. Um, so then here we're gonna go launch GUI and we're gonna open up into Companion. Now, I have a bunch of things already installed here. When you install yours, it's going to be blank in this section here. So um, that is uh, not quite what it's gonna look like, but if you want to add a connection, you can under this tab here under connections, you can go to here, add connection, and you would type in something like OBS if you wanted to do that, or ATEM if you had an ATEM switcher, um, or VLC, uh, you just type that in. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Vicrio, uh, Vicrio, hotkey, and listener, if you want to control a computer. So you can send commands from um, Companion back into your computer. Um, and as you can see, as we scroll down here, there are, there are literally hundreds of um, hardware devices that have um, actual modules that have been written to control them. So. This brings all of these devices, look how many there are, it's insane. This keeps getting bigger and bigger all the time. Um, okay, we got it to the bottom there. And so chances are you probably have some sort of um, equipment or even software that can be controlled by Companion and by consolidating all of that into Companion, we can just simplify our process. So down here on the Stream Deck is what I've programmed here. Um, so I have a uh, switcher um, so if I hit this full screen here, I've got two switches, one here and one the other one. Um, and so I can control my inputs, my downstream keys. I've got VLC playback. Um, I can do cut and auto, um, the upstream keys. And then under this menu section, this is just what I've built in here, which is um, H2R, VLC, um, playout B. I can control all of the multi-view. Um, I've got super source controls in here. 
and uh, what else have we got? Upstream keys, um, keyers, um, audio controls, um, all of this is built into um, the uh, ATEM, sorry, all of this um, ATEM and VLC playback is all built into the one controller. So that just keeps my um, desk very nice and clean here. You can see I've got a bit of mess over the back here, but my desk uh, has got lots of space to move around. I don't have to have any switches on the desk. I've actually got my ATEM Extreme is off the side here in this rack, um, and that's what's running it. Um, and so, and then I've got my computer is actually under the desk here. Um, I think I can show you that on this side angle here. Where are we? Okay, so I've just got my MacBook Pro running some Thunderbolt into the rack over here. Uh, we've got our show timer here, auto queue, and then my multi view here, which gives you an idea of what I've got plugged in here, um, which is um, two PTZ cameras, this iPhone one, which is the one I'm juggling here, and then I've got two displays in, and the green screen in the bottom corner is um, is a, a Pi running H2 uh, graphics. All right, so that's kind of that's kind of the setup of what we're dealing with here, um, and I'm going to go through and show you how to get that set up so that you can control some of your devices. Um, before we do that, let's take a little look at some of the comments here. Um, we have we have Eric, always good to have you here. Um, uh, we've got Jamie, hello from Chicago, um, Uganda, um, a ton of people here. So it's really nice to have all of you guys here on the show today, um, learning about how to control the decks. Um, uh, this one like this review. Uh, I've got some other view videos on my channel about how to control the Stream Deck and Companion um, in more depth. And what have we got here? Uh, Jules, a regular on the channel, um, who is also in New York, uh, probably uptown. I'm uh, sort of in Midtown at the moment. Um, Ireland, thank you for all these comments. Got a ton of uh, comments here. Um, John says, uh, I love that slow zoom in. Um, that is, there's one of the things you can control with um, Companion, which I'm not gonna go fully into because I don't have time to do that today, but the camera that I'm looking at, uh, you're looking at me here is a, a Canon PTZ camera, and that has a module within Companion as so many PTZ cameras do. And so we can do some nice um, zooms in and out. Uh, if I can pull up my actual camera here, where have we got, put it on, slow and I think I got this right time and like this so we can do a very slow um, controlled um, movement from one to the other and that as you saw it was just me on the stream deck with some things that I've programmed so chances are if you have a problem you're trying to solve in your live streaming um, there is a solution for it in companion and it is an open source com uh, community so if you have something that you need and um, it's not actually in there, then there's a whole community on GitHub who uh, are very good at um, adding new things to this as we go through. Um, okay, um, what else we got? So many comments here. Uh, Joseph is commenting on the Zoom and um, oh, I can't even keep up with these comments. This is great, guys. I have never, okay, I'm just gonna scan through this. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, thank you for all the comments. Um, can we explain H2R uh, graphics version two? Um, I, I might get to that. I'll sort of see if I can dip into that. Um, hello from Sydney, Monterey. Uh, tons of comments and also hit that like button. Thanks guys um, for all of that. Um, yeah, this, okay, I think I've caught up with the comments. Everything looks good. You should be able to see me and hear me and um, everyone is um, here on the channel. So let's get back to programming our um, Stream Deck. Um, so if we take a look at, I'm gonna go back to my, um, my super source layout here. So this is the um, Stream Deck that is showing you what I've got on the actual like hardware. Um, and then in the software over here, this is where all the modules that we've got installed. So, um, for example, if you wanted to add an ATEM mini, you would go ATEM um, and you go add. I'm not gonna do that because I already have one, but let's just click on 
this one. I'm going to go edit. And this is where I can give it a label. So I actually have two connected. Well, I don't have it connected because it's here, right? But normally I have um, two connected. I have an extreme and uh, a mini. So um, further down here is the um, ATEM Mini Pro. So I've just labeled mine Pro and X, like extreme, to help me differentiate so that um, if I'm doing a show where, you know, it's, you know, um, I need a backup plan, then I can have a second switcher that is there ready to be go and can be controlled. Um, or if I want to do another stream and send it out um, from somewhere, this is where I can on my stream deck down here, you'll see that I have can jump between the two. So um, I've got like my eight inputs here for the extreme. And then when I um, jump across, I'll be able to control just the four inputs that are on the other um, uh, ATEM Mini Pro, which is not plugged in, but it is actually um, both of these modules are routed to my extreme at the moment just so that they show up and there's something on there. Um, all right, back to the top here. Um, I've also got VLC added in and I've got two VLCs just so that if I'm controlling something on the, um, the, the, the Pro, I can separate that from the extreme. Um, I've got uh, H2R graphics, which after this session, um, John is going to go into in more depth, I would imagine. So um, make sure you, after this um, half hour is finished, that you go on to his channel because he has a, a great application there. Um, and I've been using it to bring on all of these comments, as you saw with the, the Raspberry Pi that is um, green screening this out across the top. Um, is the way that I'm sort of bringing on my graphics. And it just means I don't have to plug in another HDMI from my computer out. It's handled separately on the network. Um, okay, Vicrio. And Vicrio is something that is um, sending commands to a computer. So if you wanted to control your Chrome um, web browser or slides or something like that, that's where you could build um, commands into the Stream Deck so that um, if you need to action something, like you want to forward on a slide in a presentation, you can just hit that as you go through. So this is like, for example, the way that I built it out was this kind of thing, um, different color, purple, so I know it's, you know, at a glance. Um, it's not actually hooked up at the moment, but this is where I could access um, all of the, like one to nine for slide numbers. Um, and then I could jump across different tabs for Chrome and I can start slides and I can um, exit them. So that's what we've got going on there. Um, and what else we got? So OSC, um, we don't need to go into. That's just, I'm using that for some like backend functions. Um, but that's not an actual device. We've got the ATEM, VLC, H2R, Vicrio again. Um, Mix Effect is in here. Adam Toe has a great um, app called Mix Effect, so make sure you check that out on the App Store. That has a ton of functionality through iPad or an iPhone, um, and it even has that um, Stream Deck integration. So, for example, you could build in under my thing here. I've got under Stream Deck sorry, under Supersource. Um, so if I go to my menu, go to Supersource, um, I've got some built-in presets that are default with Companion um, that are, so for the um, ATEM module within Companion. And I've also got um, an array of Supersource ones where if you're connected to Adam Tower's Mix Effect, that can be controlled via the Stream Deck. So you have some physical buttons. And that's one of the advantages of this is that as we, um, uh, like looking up here and I'm like, I've got this, um, I've got this particular like Apple Bluetooth keyboard, which kind of keeps a low profile. So for me, I can like be on a computer and typing and all that kind of stuff. And then I've got these two stream decks to access things that are not in the foreground. So rather than having to go in somewhere and like go into H2R graphics and then find the thing that goes, okay, I want to bring on my uh, lower third, which says David Joshua Ford, New York. Um, I would need to do that, navigate that graphically, but um, on the Stream Deck, I can have a button under, which is this one, um, to bring that on or to take that off. Uh, so that is something that it just sort of simplifies things so that you're not bouncing through windows and trying to find um, your way around. All right. Um, what else do we have? We have um, Hyperdeck, Player B, Canon, PTZ. There's also a bunch of different PTZ modules. Um, so if you have other PTZ cameras, Canon's not the only one in there. That's actually a fairly recent addition. Um, but the, the one of the great things about PTZ cameras that I love in doing one man person 
live streaming is that you can preset a whole lot of um, uh, preset shots. And then as you saw, I was doing like slow pans between them and I can just recall that, but I can also build these actions into a show. So if I wanna execute um, the, the beginning of my show, which I won't do because there's a ton of other actions in there and I'll probably end up muting my microphone or something like that. Um, but that's where I can um, build a, under a button, I can build a whole stack of actions that will um, change the drive speed so that it goes at a constant space, uh, a pace and then it hits um, something a little bit wider. Um, okay, I'm just gonna finish off on what I've got installed here. Um, and then I've got, I haven't quite set this one up yet, but there's a Magwell Pro Convert decoder um, so that it can bring in NDI and then I can actually switch the sources. And, and then there's also OBS, which is a great point. Um, if we go to, um, I'm just gonna open this up a bit. So let's, let's boot up OBS. So you see at the moment down here, it's saying error, and then it just went okay. Um, so it has connected to OBS. You do need to download uh, a webhook, which is within the GitHub so that it can speak to OBS. Um, but this is something where under here, I've got scenes. So if you wanted to download Companion and you don't have an ATEM Mini um, and you just wanna get started with OBS, you can connect Companion to OBS um, and you could set up, for example, I've got scenes one to five and then on my this page here, if I come over to here, I've actually connected these um, buttons a little bit like the ATEM Mini Pro where you've got a program row and you've got a preview row. Um, if I go to <clears throat> this one, not that one, this one. Um, so that if I bring up OBS and put, and I'm pressing these buttons, you'll see that as I'm switching the preview here, and I don't actually have that many cameras connected because my laptop is closed. Um, but I had, uh, previously I had like a face, uh, FaceTime camera in the scene one. And then I had, um, excuse me. Getting a bit of a dry throat there. And um, as you didn't quite see, under my custom, I have a, a mic button that I can just like cut mic if I'm getting dry throat and my water is somewhere, somewhere over there. Um, but that is just another example of uh, a way in which you could like cut to something else and then cough with the mic cut and then come back and no one would know, but we're showing you behind the scenes here of how it all works. And today my, my throat's a little bit dry. So um, let's go back to the show page and uh, keep going through here. So with the, with the program, similarly, I can um, cut straight to program, which is, this is all black at the moment. so. That's probably not the best example, although I do have a desktop view in here. Um, and so you'll notice that is cutting through. And then this, um, this auto and cut button, I can actually um, use this one rather than like back here, this was connected to the ATEM Mini Pro and Extreme to do those cut and auto. Under the OBS layout, you can just put in another function where you can cut between those sources on OBS. So you could be, sending something um, out to the web. You could be live streaming from OBS and switching it on a stream deck. Um, and when you think about it, Companion is free. Um, there's a free profile on my website in the description. Um, if you click on that link and go download that, um, then that'll just get you started with some modules. So if you want things that are populated in Companion, um, then it'll give you an idea of how to go about doing that rather than just sort of coming into a blank space um, but that's free, OBS is free, a Companion is free. Um, all you really need is a camera and a microphone and chances are you've got that on your iPhone uh, or your laptop. So there's, there's no reason to not live stream in today's world other than have you got something to talk about? Um, so uh, I recommend if you are looking to up your live streaming game, then getting Companion is a really nice way to stack actions. All right, so let's go on to stacking actions and, and what this looks like when we are bringing up something like the um, the um, companion here. And so what I've got here is my um, streaming, this is my like sort of home base, which is uh, I come back to being able to switch all of the inputs so I can cut from um, input one onto input two. 
But um, as you saw before, there's like a ton of stuff you can do in here. And I've actually filled up all 99 pages of Companions ability. And um, so if you can't like jump over to key number three and select sort of an input there or um, change that kind of stuff, you, can, you know, when you're, when you're presenting yourself on camera, um, you, you don't have the time and the space to do that. Um, so you really need to build a run of show um, and copy those buttons from somewhere or build new commands. And that's what we're gonna do now. Um, all right, so under this uh, custom here, where are we? Um, this is what my page looks like. So I have my home switcher page and then I have a custom page, which is usually what I'm running my shows off because this doesn't really change. So I have a lot of functions here that I um, re, uh, always fall back on. For example, I've got my, my camera one. This is my sort of safety button. So if I, I'm ever like somewhere in a show and I'm, I'm just getting lost because I've brought up keys and I'm doing this and that, um, then I, I need a sort of a safe button. Um, and that is this particular one here. And then it's sort of an A and a B position uh, subsequently from that. But for example, if I was lost right now, I would just hit that and it's got a little bit of a, um, it sort of pulls back to this position and then it cuts. Um, I was on screen at the moment. If I wasn't on screen, you wouldn't have even seen that um, reposition. So this is just like, hey, back to default position. Um, all right, and then obviously my uh, super source layout here has some other actions stacked under there to bring me back into a close up because I wanna be, when I go into my super source layout here, I wanna make sure that my um, head is easier to see that I'm closer to the camera. And so I've got some zooms that the PTZ camera is actioning um, in the background. Um, all right, so like, for example, today, what I did with this show is I have a pre-show button and that just kind of like goes to a home position and it mutes my mic and um, it puts something in program and it puts something in preview and that might change depending on whether I'm doing like a blurred out shot or something like that, um, or whether I've got some video playback. And then today I added in this two minute thing here. So it was like, we had those maps, um, which were fantastic. And thank you for sending that over guys. Um, really appreciated having that um, countdown. It was fun to watch that line sort of come in. Um, and so that's where at two minutes. Um, so let's go back to here under, and I'll bring this one up, close this one down. Two minutes, all right, so what's under the two minute button? So under the two minute button, I have built in an action. So this is a press action here. And under this field, so you got um, press actions and then release actions, and then a feedback state, which is gonna show me what's, uh, if there's any feedback um, from something that's running in the background. And so what I've got here is I was using VLC to play back the map at the beginning. Um, and so I have put in a command, which I would type in um, VLC and it would bring up a whole bunch of VLC commands that are available. I've actually got two VLCs in here. So I've got a pro VLC and an extreme VLC. So I need to make sure I'm selecting the right one. And then I would say, um, I don't want to do play. I want to do play ID. And that was actually clip number one. Um, and if you see in my VLC queue here, um, we had Petra to David and then David to John and just some blank ones here. And so this first clip is actually the one that is showing up. Um, I don't have it up here, but this, see here, it says 005 David to John. Um, that is where it is actually reading this name here and bring this, bring that VLC data into, um, uh, into companion. Um, so for example, if I just put this over here on my, cause I've got another monitor for this. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm playing this in my other monitor. Um, let's see if I can go to my safe position. This is where I'm playing it on, okay? So um, this is my sort of background monitor and this is being duplicated into the ATEM so that I can have an idea of like, what is my video playback? Um, so I'm not actually using a hyperdeck in this situation. I'm using VLC uh, with two outputs from the MacBook. So the MacBooks are pretty um, powerful these days. They can do a ton of stuff. Um, and then you shall see back under here, um, see, see the countdown is running here. So I have, um, whoop, on this side, I'm not on the camera. Um, under here, I've got uh, feedback. So that's what I was saying before about, um, you can have feedback coming through. If I click up on this one here, you'll see 
uh, dollar sign parentheses, the module name, ext vlc, um, and then r underscore left is um, the the short code that is saying, you know, bring in that data point. Um, good thing is you don't actually have to know this. And that's one of the great things about companion is you don't have to remember code and all that kind of stuff. It's all built into the application. So under um, presets, so I've gone to this, this tab over here is um, the buttons. So we, remember we had the connections tab and then we have the buttons tab. And under the buttons tab, you've got 99 pages where you can flick through and um, select all sorts of, uh, you can sort of design different page layout. Um, and then under, over here, you've got um, presets and variables. Um, also, you've got import and export. So if you wanted to import um, the profile that I mentioned that was in the description here, if you click on that link and download that, um, this is where you would come to import that. Um, but under presets, basically, let's look at like, let's go to H2R because I know we're coming up on John soon. So um, because I have H2R's module installed, um, this is... Uh, has some presets that have now turned up under this presets tab. So I'm going to click on this and I've got basic actions and show hide. I'm going to click on show hide. Um, so these buttons here have been automatically found and populated from what I have in my H2R graphics rundown. So if I bring this one over here, you can see that all of these different um, uh, things that I've got in here. So if I go add, I could add in lower third, messages, time, image, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is um, where you build that. And then on the companion side of things, these are showing up and you can just um, drag and drop them. Um, I'm gonna, let me see, I'm gonna just grab this one. I would drag that and drop it here. I don't actually need that button. So I will, yeah, so that's how it would go. Um, and then you would be able to click that and um, if you hold down shift, I can actually test it out. So here we are doing a H2R graphic link there. Um, and the same thing on here would be pressing this graphic to bring that on. Um, so it makes it very simple being able to do that. Um, and then also to, um, uh, just watching the time here, I've got about 30 seconds left. Um, also to be able to build that into multiple actions. Um, so coming back to uh, my two minute mark, what I had here was to basically play this particular clip and then set the program. So I uh, was able to cut across and then get that countdown going. All right, I'm going to hit my safety button and we're gonna start to wrap up here cause I gotta get out of here so that John can come on in. Um, but thank you for joining today. Um, and if you have any other questions, let me know, uh, post in the, in the comments or check out that link below and um, subscribe to the channel and I will have more things to do with Companion coming up. All right, thanks guys. And I shall see you on the panel. Bye.